Hi, I am Christina McGrath Fair from Falgebatic. I'm the current president, and we're just here today with a quick PSA about um, World AIDS Day. Um, and so World AIDS Day is designated on um, December 1st. The first World AIDS Day was celebrated in 1988. And so it's an international day that is dedicated to raising awareness about AIDS and HIV and um, mourning the loss of the people um, that have died because of the pandemic. And so um, it's a day that we remember that there are ways to prevent ourselves from spreading HIV and also um, the importance of getting tested and knowing our status. And so today I am joined by um, Sammy and Sammy's going to tell us a little bit more about the testing process just to kind of demystify that um, that process so that hopefully more people will go out and get tested and, and be aware of their status. So welcome Sammy. Thank you. Um, so like Dr. McGrath Fair just said, uh, my name is Sammy. I was a previous HIV tester for about two years in Central Florida. During that time, um, I volunteered at a local nonprofit and I did HIV testing, hepatitis C testing. Um, I did a lot of uh, patient focused care. And so I'm just here um, today to talk about the HIV testing process kind of demystify and also destigmatize um, the process and HIV itself. Um, we've come a long way since when HIV was first um, kind of introduced into um, society and became um, sort of a, a, a pandemic. So um, I'm gonna talk about the actual testing process, ways to keep yourself safe, and some of the resources we have to keep yourself safe, or if you are um, diagnosed with HIV, to continue to keep yourself safe, and um, what to expect, essentially. So um, our biggest tool against fighting HIV is testing. So um, there are, it, depending on the state you're in, if you're in Florida, you can go through the Florida Health Department, or there's usually um, a pretty large selection of nonprofits, depending on your area, and they'll do HIV testing. So um, depending on the location you go to, you can either come in same day or make an appointment. Um, you'll meet with an HIV tester. This HIV tester uh, has about, um, they, we take about three days worth of classes. So we have about 24 hours of classes and then we see about 40 patients before we're allowed to interact um, on our own and provide care. So we're well-trained in administering the tests and um, speaking with clients as well. So we'll take you into a room, um, we'll sit down with you and we'll introduce the type of test that we're gonna do. Um, this can depend on the clinic, but you, there's two main ones that um, clinics usually use in Florida. There's one called the INSTI and it's a 60 second um, finger stick. It's minimally invasive. It takes a small amount of blood and it will have your result, results ready in about 60 seconds. Um, and that one is 99.7% accurate for detecting HIV antibodies. And then the more common one I've seen is something called the um, SureCheck. That one is also 99.7% accurate, minimally invasive finger stick, takes very small amount of blood, um, and it takes about 15 minutes to process your results. Um, the biggest difference between accessing the two is usually funding. It's not a question of efficacy. So whichever one you receive, um, you have that peace of mind, both highly um, accurate at detecting HIV antibodies. Um, so the tester will introduce themselves, talk about the process. Um, usually there's an informed consent process. So the tester will talk about um, the type of test they're gonna use, um, the fact that they're gonna take a small amount of blood and the processing time. Um, they're gonna talk about how they're gonna ask you some sensitive questions um, pertaining to uh, your risk factors. Um, it can be kind of a, um, a sensitive topic to navigate, but they'll usually disclose up front that they're gonna ask you these questions for um, a variety of purposes and I'll get into that later. Um, and then they'll also tell you about um, other considerations to have in mind. So with HIV, there's a phenomenon when it's first introduced into your system and this is called the window period. So um, when HIV is introduced into your system, it can take up to 90 days for your body to develop enough antibodies to be detected on the test. And since we're detecting for HIV, HIV antibodies and not HIV itself, if you get tested maybe a week or two after exposure, it may not reflect on that test. Um, so we're gonna give you all that information and make sure that you're in the know before you go ahead and um, sign up to do your test. 
And then once we have your informed consent, um, we start from there. So um, depending on the type of test, if it's an instant test, usually they'll do the questionnaires first. If it's the um, 15 minute sure check, usually we'll multitask and we'll administer the test and then do some questions. Um, so uh, because the test takes some time to develop, um, the questions we ask will be, um, there's usually two types of questionnaires, maybe three. It depends on the site. No matter where you go, you're going to get a form called a 1628. It's like a big yellow form. And we're going to ask you some information about your salient identities, um, your demographics. Um, you're going to need your state ID as well. We're going to use information off that to fill in some of that. Um, so first, we'll gather information about race, ethnicity, things like that. And that's primarily um, for funding purposes. We send that back to Tallahassee. And then that information is um, digested by um, statisticians, uh, people in charge of funding, and they can kind of delegate out those, um, the money where it needs to be depending on um, your, the community that needs services the most. So, um, and then the rest of the questions are also, um, they're risk factor questions. So it'll ask you things about, have you ever experienced homelessness? Um, if you've ever had unprotected sex with a male, with a female, um, someone who is gender non-conforming. Um, the test uh, will ask you things such as um, if you use drugs intravenously, if so, how many partners um, have you had? And then this is also for funding purposes, but it's also to help um, generate a dialogue between the HIV counselor and the client so we can find ways to keep you safer, engage in some harm reduction techniques. So um, if I had a client that um, was said that they thought they were exposed to HIV last night, we can go from there. There's um, something called pre-exposure prophylaxis and we can get you linked to someone um, who can prescribe you pre-exposure prophylaxis, um, which is a series of pills that uh, you, the client can take to reduce your risk of contracting HIV after exposure by around 95%. So it's a pretty powerful tool. Um, you have 72 hours to have it administered um, after you think you've been uh, exposed to HIV, and uh, it's a it's a pretty powerful tool, and you usually ways to get it for free. So, um, or if um, the client has other types of um, behaviors that are considered high risk, we can um, also find other ways between the counselor and the client to kind of reduce the risk. And then um, we'll also educate you on other resources such as um, PrEP, which is pre-exposure prophylaxis. And that's a medication you take once a day, every day to reduce your risk of contracting HIV by around 94, 95%. Um, so there's medication interventions and then there's um, ways to um, alter your behaviors or um, ways to kind of meet between the counselor and the client to make sure that you're engaging in the most um, safe and informed um, type of uh, practices. So um, once the test develops, depending on um, the result of the test, there's um, two types of results. Um, there's reactive, which means the test um, tested reactive for HIV antibodies. Um, and then there is non-reactive, which means there is no antibodies detected. Um, if you test non-reactive, um, what's going to happen is I'm going to give you your test. I'm going to say it was non-reactive. I'm going to fill out a card for you, and I'm going to give you a follow-up appointment. This is usually pretty, um, pretty every site um, I have experience with professionally, they are proactive, and they'll give you the card and a follow-up appointment just so you can uh, be able to come back every three months routinely, just so you can be up to date with your status. Um, Cause that's one of the most powerful prevention um, tools in HIV and knowing your status. So um, if your test happens to be reactive, uh, what will happen next is depending on the uh, site placement you're at, um, either the HIV counselor or someone on the staff will come in, they'll draw your blood um, and they'll send it off to a lab in, um, I believe Tallahassee, uh, and it'll be processed. Um, Florida is something called a um, double positive state, meaning your first uh, initial test, um, while it may be reactive, um, if you go to a uh, Florida funded testing location, they're gonna do, wanna do a follow-up test um, just to ensure that uh, there are indeed HIV antibodies being detected in your bloodstream. But while that um, is being processed, 
uh, if the location you're at has a doctor or medical professionals, um, they can usually get you an appointment the same day or within the next few days um, in the same location. The location I um, was at didn't have a doctor, so we would uh, have we would have um, a very like a, a linkage of care sheet, and we would call and make sure the client walked out with an appointment before we um, dismissed them to come in in the next few weeks for a follow up. But we would make sure that the client was going to see a medical professional. Um, we would have um, a list of other resources as well. So um, we had a variety of groups, um, so peer support groups. We had um, uh, counseling as well. We have mental health counselors on staff. Um, ultimately, we'll have the client come back in about two weeks and then um, check in with them. But in those two weeks, the client um, would have we would have made an appointment for them to see a, a medical doctor to start an HIV um, treatment regimen, and that usually entails a series of one or two pills, um, and uh, you take those every day. Um, it's a it it's a chronic um, health condition that you can manage through medication and lifestyle intervention. So the doctor will most likely um, encourage you to. Um, practice uh, better habits to better your health. So um, encourage exercise, getting eight hours of sleep, eating more nutritious food, things like that, lifestyle changes, and as well as taking your medication regimen as well. And the ultimate goal in HIV um, treatment as of now uh, is to um, reach a status called undetectable. And what undetectable means is that there is not enough um, HIV virus in your body to be detectable on um, these tests. So when someone is undetectable, it means their uh, viral load is suppressed enough to amount where they actually can't um, transfer it to a partner during sexual activity as well. So right now, um, when treating clients, that's the ultimate goal to get them to a point where um, the viral load is undetectable. And then um, from here on out, we're just hoping science leads the way and find some um, some cures and other interventions. And um, that's pretty much it. That was what my role was as an HIV counselor. And um, if you have any questions, you can I can link my email, and I'd be happy to assist. Thank you so much for sharing um, your knowledge and your experience. Um, I believe this has been really helpful and informative for me um, and hopefully for everyone watching. So thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me.